Another 3,900 Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories have received the green light. The Israeli Minister of Military Affairs, Avigdor Lieberman, made the announcement on Twitter. Next week, we will bring 2,500 new housing units to the Supreme Planning Council in Judea and Samaria, of which 1,400 will be built immediately. We will promote construction throughout Judea and Samaria from north to south, in small and large settlements. We will continue to settle and develop Judea and Samaria by deeds. Judea and Samaria are the biblical names for the occupied West Bank. So given the historical context in which this is happening, I think it is clear that uh, basically Israeli policy has not changed. The goal is to get as much land as possible. This is mostly in Area C, uh, with as few Palestinians as possible, and that involves building settlements. Some half a million Israelis live in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem al-Quds. The UN considers settlements that Israel has built in territory it captured in the 1967 Arab-Israeli war to be illegal. We believe that settlement activity is illegal under international law. We believe it is an obstacle to the two-state solution. Palestinians say the settlements could deny them a viable state in the future. They want the West Bank, along with East Jerusalem al-Quds and the Gaza Strip, to be part of their future state. But Israel says its settlements are not illegal and their future should only be determined in negotiations. But talks between the two sides have been stalled since 2014. In any case, settlement activities are among the most complicated issues when it comes to efforts to reach any sort of lasting agreement between the two sides. Israel's policy has long been, take as much as you can, so the Israelis were thrilled when U.S. President Donald Trump broke with a long-standing international policy that the fate of the holy city of Jerusalem al-Quds can only be determined through negotiations. He declared the city as the capital of Israel and relocated the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem al-Quds. Excited by the recognition of Jerusalem al-Quds as Israel's capital, Tel Aviv now wants to annex Syria's occupied Golan Heights. Israeli intelligence minister Israel Katz says Tel Aviv has asked Washington to recognize Israeli sovereignty over the occupied territory, and the decision could come in a few months. Uh, the Israelis have already colonized the Golan Heights and claimed it for their own, uh, but trying to give some legal uh, cover for this is going to annoy the Syrians. Now, there's a lot going on in Syria uh, uh, with all the different factions and all the fighting and all the devastation and all the refugees. Uh, so uh, it's hard to say uh, what exactly the Syrians are going to do. The Golan Heights form a strategic plateau between Israel and Syria. It was part of Syria until Israel captured it during the 1967 war. It moved Israeli settlers there and annexed the territory in 1981 in a move not recognized internationally. Israel says the U.S. recognition can deal a blow to Tehran. Iran is one of Syria's closest allies. So this may be uh, a provocative move that will provoke uh, the Iranian-supported work in Syria, which is extremely dangerous for Israel. So um, I, I think this is dangerous and it's provocative. The U.S. recently withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal and reimposed sanctions on the country in an effort to weaken it. Iran has repeatedly warned that it does not seek war, but will defend itself and its interests if attacked. <laughs>